Oh, here we are again now and it's like no time has passed Gazing out upon the sunset as it sinks into the night Many times it seemed as though a given day might be our last Face to face with certain death, it's somehow coming out all right I don't think that we have any cause to lament But there's quite a lot of thrilling intent Thrilling intent Thrilling intent, thrilling intent. You come out into, you come out back into the courtyard and it's still, it's getting later and there's still that eerie silence, but now it has an almost more sinister edge, I guess knowing a little more of the nature of what's going on with this place. Hey, Mia, I've got a question. Yeah? When the higher-ups disappeared, did they disappear in the same way that we were talking about earlier, under weird circumstances, or did they just leave like normal? It was... I think it was fine, she says, trailing off, but... Something about that doesn't seem right, like like she's thinking about something on the side. I'll everyone everyone agreed that they just they'd gone off, um, but thinking There was about, no announcement of any sort? Yeah, thinking about it, I missed the the entourage leaving to begin with. She sort of trails off. I I, I didn't see them go. Uh I just I just heard they did. You heard that, Mercy? Maybe they weren't evil traitors, maybe they're just dead. <laughs> I don't know if you think that makes me feel better, <laughs> but you know what? Nice try, kiddo. <laughs> Death is permanent. It usually makes me feel better. <laughs> That's morbid. But it's I'm a factor just... that I no longer need to consider. Oh, oh boy. Okay. Um, it's a constant. Huh. Yeah, no, I, I, I kind of see what you're saying. You see what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Mia, out of curiosity. Did these strange occurrences happen before or after General Gold and his men left? Uh, they... She tries to sort the timeline a bit in her head. I guess... I guess they would have started happening around the same time. Um, hmm. it started to feel really uncomfortable after General Gold had left because all of our higher-ups were gone. Um... We had no, we had no real way of organizing or figuring out what's going on. The only people in charge right now are captains. So, uh, mm. she sort of shakes her head, but, but I, that almost I, it feels like a symptom more than the cause of it. Uh, mm. she, she like looks around a little nervously again, the wind starting to howl, picking up, causing a causing almost a distortion uh, in the air as it whistles around this great cavity carved in the mountain. It, it feels like... Uh, it feels like they were... They were maybe protecting us from this? I don't know. Um, hmm. huh. Regardless, they were... And once the they were gone, there was, no there was nothing here to protect you, and that's when things got... Is th did, did the other disappearances only start after they had left? Uh, she nods. Hmm. That th that's not a good thing. I'm. What do you guys think? This kind of sounds as though the generals, in some way, whether it was directly or indirectly, had some sort of effect on the disappearances. <sighs> there, there is clearly something here with that. Out of curiosity, this might be a very dumb question, so I apologize. Did anyone see them leave? She unhelpfully shrugs. Hmm. I I don't know. Uh. I, I haven't looked into that, at least, because... The, p the person you heard it from didn't, didn't like, actually see this? Uh, I assume they would have. Uh, you need to go talk to one of the captains about that, though. Right. Uh, she, she shakes her head, but keeping my head down is what's kept me alive so far, so... Of course, fair. Hmm. Maybe they did leave, Mercy looks at the mine. Just not the same way we thought. As you sort of enter... We should have brought a lantern. We should have brought a lantern. Um, no! 
Here's the thing. I was about to say something related to that. You oh. think for a second, man, we should have brought a lantern. Marcus, you have fucking dark vision. Part two, mercy is a lantern. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Part three, I'm wearing glasses. <laughs> 100% night vision, Harlock. Gregor walks into a wall. <laughs> Mer- Mercy puts up, like, a, a signal to stop. Um, and, like, leans out and tries to dampen her own light a little bit as she, like, pokes her head out to look around a bit. Um, and also listens very closely. <laughs> yeah, you listen close. Uh, you don't hear anything. Uh, only that wind from outside, barely, but... As you go into the mines, that sort of dies down more and more. There's no, there's no even like little drip drop that you might expect from the environment. It just, you're well contained within the meat of the earth. Yeah. What a way of saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I just had the weirdest internal monologue. <laughs> <laughs> you should be used to it by now, Marcus. <laughs> should be, but I'm definitely not. <laughs> Marcus snags a couple of unlit lanterns off the wall and hands them to the non-dark-visioned members of the party. It's all right, I have a stick and charcoal. (laughs) (laughs) It never stops! (laughs) You should have never brought me to the mine. (laughs) Um, Mia, have you ever been in the mines before? She shakes her head. No, I... I'm... I was a I was a wall sentry. Uh, anyone who was in here mining was probably um, she sort of motions around, pulled in from the outside. Most of the soldiers here sort of stick away from the mines. There are a few civilians we actually sort of were lending shelter to, but uh, I haven't seen them in a while. Put them to work in the mines, eh? <laughs> she she sort of uh, shrugs. If they were looking for work or a job, yeah, this was one of the areas that they could help out. Wait, you you had civilians here? She nods. This this fortress was meant to be a shelter for people to survive the catastrophe that's happening outside. Mia, I would personally prefer if you were not in the back lines. She she looks back, realizing that there is a huge, like, gap between her and the courtyard. The courtyard, you can sense, is a place of fear. So she just nods, and without saying a word, places herself in the middle of you. <laughs> Don't worry, it's going to be all right. Harlock, do you want me to lead? I can take a hit better. Yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> Mia shifts out of the way. Letting you pass. Excuse me? You all shuffle around. So, are we just going to wander through these abandoned mine shafts until something happens? Well, I think our objective currently is to do a quick look, maybe quick is the wrong word. A small investigation, see if anything catches our attention. And if things escalate, I plan on caving this in. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? How? How? <laughs> How? Hello, she flexes. <laughs> right, okay, that's fine. But if this is if this is anywhere even close to up to code, then just breaking one or two support struts shouldn't do anything. Marcus, do I need to introduce you to their cousins and gestures to her abs? I've got this. I see your muscles. I see your muscles. I, I've been introduced. She's I respect your muscles. She's going to punch it with her abs? This is a family of six. Should have been eight. But listen. <laughs> All I'm saying is that caving something like this in is going to involve breaking more, probably more than half of the support struts, and it could go at any point while you're doing that. That's extremely dangerous. Yeah, we had a saying in rock farming, don't cave in a cave you're in. No, I- Is that a rock farming thing? Once you hit the big biz. Oh, okay. I am not causing a cave-in as we go. That's dumb as hell. I'm doing it as we're leaving. I'm not going to touch anything until we are on the way out. What I'm saying is that even doing it as you're leaving risks the ceiling coming down on you at any second, and is also going to mean a lot of work of breaking supports while we are presumably running for- Let me- Let me- And what if there's clues in here? You're- 
Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Your bickering bounces off every single corner oh, of shit. the minds, and the once silence is now lit up with discussions on proper cave-in methodology, the expertise of a rock farmer, and the most efficient way to destroy this place. You get the feeling like, <coughs> as the final words bounce out, ringing out through the place, and silence resumes, you get this sensation of like, oh right, we're alone. Oh, oh yes, 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 okay. <laughs> Let me mm. clarify this for the final time. I'm not attacking support beams as we go. It's literally just the entrance. I'm not mm. trying to cave the whole thing in, oh. just the entrance. Yes. See, if you had said that, yeah, that's a different story. That's more like closing a door. Then I would have understood. Yeah, that's with a cave in. Exactly. Except the door is the I, earth. Uh, and I gravity. apologize for the lack of detail and semantics being a thing. <laughs> Let's <forgive> go. <laughs> We're big on details. <laughs> What what kind of what kind of pickaxe is this? <laughs> Having seen the way they keep coal around here, we don't know how much the military <laughs> knows about, you know, proper rock farming. Yeah, no, and and just proper proper uh, industrial like codes in general. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you were asking what type of pickaxe this is? Mm -hmm. Steel. <laughs> well, it's good. It's not foam rubber. I take it. <laughs> uh. Mercy examines the rock that Marcus is just climbing over. <laughs> you take a look at the rock, and it appears to be, um... It appears to be a pretty strong, rather sturdy rock. It, uh, just taking a look at... I knock on one side. Is it hollow? Uh, it is not hollow. It is, it is a strong, sturdy rock. You have to, you have to guess these ones were mined out, likely because they were of a harder material than the rest of it, and breaking it down would have been a pain in the ass. So, yeah, this, this powerful rock just sits there. It is not notable in any way, I should point out. Like... Okay. No magic resonance, no like, ah, yes, they were secretly cool, cool. harvesting angel eggs. No, yeah, this is a normal ass rock. Well, that is up to code. Marcus crawls off down, cr crawls down uh, off of it. Are there any markings of angels or watching or anything of the sort on the walls? Not in the mines. In fact, you like, you, you pretty carefully scan the walls around here and... As you look a little closer, all you see is, like, various divots that were caused by very intentional mining. This area has been cleared up pretty intentionally. What's going on over here? Oh, hold here? up, Marcus. Yeah, you, you take a gander at that. Oh, I'm gandering. Yeah, you, you take a look at some... You take a look at some machinery, it almost looks like a plow almost, but... Huh. That's probably not right. Yeah, taking a look at it a little closer, this has been sort of... There's like, there is a layer of magical rune work around the very bottom of the plow section that you can hmm. use is basically, like, that you can tell has basically been used to even out the flooring around here. Okay. Think of it like a, uh, a magical Zamboni. <laughs> I will think of it as exactly that thing, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would appreciate that. <laughs> very much so, thank you, dude. <laughs> yeah, Mercy's examining this whatever this is this is very different yeah you you approach sort of the end of the mine the visible end of the mine and there appears to be you were talking about cave-ins earlier there appears to be one right here hmm. good thing i have a pickaxe <laughs> mia were there reports of a cave-in by chance she shakes her head has anyone gone in here since the other miners did not return i I think so. Uh, this place isn't off limits mm. or anything. I've seen some people come in and out of this place, but Strange. nobody I really talk to. What is this stone here? Is this is this uncovered? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You uh, you look down and you start to run your hand along the floor. Actually, no, I'm not going to assume that for you. What do you do to engage with this thing? I, I poke the floor with my hand. Thank you. <laughs> you you run your uh, you run your hand along the floor and sort of through whatever the substance is. It appears to be an almost sand like substance. Ooh, like like the angel sand. Mercy immediately superheats her hand and grips it and sees if it has the same reaction as the sand from the tower and turns into an orb. Uh, yeah. Ooh. So as as you start to grip down on this... Hey, hey, it, watch it with the red hot... Oh, okay. 
light starts to cascade off the sides of the walls as you focus in trying to trying to draw out whatever this shit is and you're like it's exactly the same as the tower oh fu-. and exactly in that moment you hear a flip from back behind you and Ooh. gregor you are extremely on guard at this point right you're like you're ready you're prepared you're going to protect mia from all of this bull crap Mercy, also, even focused in right now, you still have your charge as a guardian, and what you don't pick up is the presence of people approaching nearby that crept up on you at some point, maybe during the shifting around the discussion, or perhaps they were here all along. Hmm. A small contingent of soldiers actually sits over in the corner, and one of them, firing around this corner, shoots out one of those harpoons. And, Gregor, you managed to negotiate me out of the way, and Mercy, you managed to physically shield her from the hit, instead getting struck just the same. Mercy, where in your body are you taking a harpoon? Oh, boy. Uh... You know what? Let's... Not the cousins. Those abs have to remain flawless. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, I think, I think probably like just in the shoulder, and it Ooh. digs real fucking deep. Oh, you get hit in the shoulder, and here's the thing: it doesn't hurt. It doesn't. Yeah, these even, harpoons are weird. It doesn't mm. even remotely hurt you, Mercy. It just hits, sticks, and that's it. It remains sticking out of you. This gigantic arrowhead. And then your arm starts to feel numb. Oh. Um. Paralytically, almost, almost akin to petrifaction from the point of the wound, this begins to radiate outwards. You remember the effect it had on the other angel. Oh, dear. Uh, oh, should I oh take no. this out? Was it barbed? That's probably a bad idea, right? Uh, I'd like to do something. Pull it all the way through. Uh, uh Gregor, yes. Yeah, Gregor recognizes this harpoon from before. This super cool yeah. harpoon that's so cool, I really want one. Yeah. <clears throat> Despite still being a bit woozy, he activates his pan-dimensional sight and takes a hard look at this harpoon that's sort of creeping along and petrifying Mercy's arm. Okay. Seeing that Gregor has this, Marcus is moving to buy time against these soldiers. Um, okay, excellent. But we, so can, you're going we can to... do the other stuff first. So you're going, you're going to try to cut the harpoon out? Is the harpoon... Like the type that's uh, tied to the launcher or anything, or is it just like a? Uh... Oh no! It's uh, sorry. I keep saying a harpoon. Really, I mean giant crossbow. <laughs> oh, okay, big yes. gun. Big, significant medieval gun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I assume through my uh, enhanced sight that it's pretty weird looking. No. No. Mm. Nope. Not even remotely. That is everything it should be. Okay, so Gregor is pretty surprised to see that the bolt that's sticking out of Mercy's arm isn't as crazy looking as expected, considering the weird stuff that it's doing. It's proper- this bread is made correct! Yeah, it's so normal that he wonders if his eyes aren't working properly, but no- he he's looking at it. The best way to put it, Gregor, is using your pan-dimensional sight. <clears throat> Mercy has a little weirdness going on in general, right? <laughs> like the the ASMR aspects, and like specifically where it seems to most of our power is drawn, and also the abs. Um, <laughs> have, have concentrations of like, ooh, that's a little more that's a little more unusual or supernatural. You watch this spread almost like frost across glass, actually removing that strangeness bit by bit. Mm. Gregor, this thing, this thing is doing its job, you realize. It's rewriting the bread. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't know what that means precisely, and I'm not exactly ecstatic about that. <laughs> Harlock? Do you have a plan or something that you're going to do at this juncture? Uh, yeah, but you might not like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh? Upon hearing that, uh, and what was just described... I look at the stump that's Harlock's arm, and then look at Mercy. Yeah! 
What are you going to do? Brain says, rip off the arm. <laughs> Maybe get the harpoon out first? Uh, here, I want to I pop in real quick. <laughs> Taking my arm is not a great idea because it's in my shoulder, meaning yeah. it's spreading yeah. to the rest of my body. So all you're doing is taking my arm for no fucking <laughs> Just reason. The arm. <laughs> Some nice math too, dipshit. <laughs> Maybe just stole the harpoon? Oh my god. Yeah, let's pull the uh let's pull the harpoon through and through and see if it stops. Okay. You need to push it through, do not pull, it's got a hook on it. <laughs> okay, uh so you're going to do that. Uh for for mercy, basically you're going to this is going to be separated out, but whatever this paralytic agent is, it's not really hurting you is the best description. It is just rendering you immobile. Uh it feels it feels like your skin's turning to stone. That's the best description I've got. Uh Marcus, what are you doing? Uh first off, are they advancing at all? Yes. Okay, so immediately uh he Marcus throws a, an Eldritch Blast at the floor to kind of, like, s- startle them back, hopefully. Going okay. for, like, big big and loud and, like, flashy more than anything else. You send up a wave of... You send up this wave of shit that manages to keep them back for a second. What do you follow yeah. up with? I, I want to, like, push a couple of them back also. Then... Oh, okay. Using a Shadow Tendril, actually, if that would be okay. Using yes. a Shadow Tendril to reach out. When I was examining this thing, did yeah. I see, like, a, a rune to activate it? Like, is there just some clear way to get it going? <laughs> You're gonna turn on the Zamboni. <laughs> um, maybe. <laughs> So you managed to send up this layer of like a layer of dust and just it like the entire mind like almost feels like it's shaking for a second and you hear the rocks dropping off the ceiling as you manage to drive them back and everything seems quiet for a moment as you as you feel like you've swung the Zamboni through their number but through that dust through that devastation you hear you hear a crawling, scrabbling sound. You hear, you hear a noise, horrific, growing as something moves through the darkness. And Marcus, I don't need to be the one to tell you your dark vision lets you see all of this perfectly in excruciating detail. I, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> This creature bursts through the ranks, bursts through the dust, and clears the hallway in an instant. Oh, oh, holy shit! Charging downwards, it manages to grab you, pushing oh. you forwards, shoving you past. Gregor, you are physically fucking, fucking bitten and gnashed as it crosses by. Take a wound. However, you land off to the side, and Marcus, you are just dragged down the hallway. Oh. You just see him disappear. <laughs>